and I couldn't see myself getting dressed right. and getting in the car and doing all that. So, <laughs> and like when the construction first stopped, I was trying to, I would get some rest. Like I'll get calm and it'll go away, you know. Mm -hmm. And that kind of kept me going, you know what I mean? Like so when it stopped, right? Like I was like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. And so I was thinking of gonna stop, but it didn't. So it, what, what question did you have? Okay. Um, <laughs> Not so, to interrupt you. No, you didn't. Um, so I know this is December, and I had him at the very end of January, but I still have my books in the, in the freezer, and I don't know, like, do I keep, because it's like, what do, do I, do I you, wanted you, to, You're thinking about eating it? I don't know, like, I don't know if I should, like, let it unthaw and dry out, and then bullet, like, let it, like, totally dry so, out in the sun, and then blend it, maybe? So, question. Like, what can I do with it? Here's the question first and foremost, I must ask, what is your purpose? with the placenta. What is your original purpose? Okay. What's your purpose? So I was thinking, first of all, I appreciate it. Like it it, 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 it helped nourish me and my baby like throughout the entire journey. So I don't want to just discard it. And then I, you know, I kind of want to, how do I put it? Um, let me get my thoughts together. You, so you want to put in little capsules? You want to try to, you know, Oh, you want I to want to keep it with me. Like, okay. I, like I want it. I want okay, to so you're not saying you want to. You want you talking about you want to consume it. I feel like I should. You talking about like eat it, right? Yes. Okay, look, it's okay to ask that question <laughs> because Why I've been asked. Ask, to... I've been asked that question plenty of times. Okay. Or the, should I at this, this time? At this here's point. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I never tell people what to do, what not to do. I just guide them. Okay, because I know that everything is through learning experience. Okay, you're gonna learn the most through your self learning. You know, not just learning from me, but also with yourself and your experience. So what I'm here to do is give you uh, insight. That's what you're asking for. You need some insight. Yes. You I, have to say that. I was thinking about sending it off, but what would be the proper way if I don't consume it? You know what I mean? So You said sending it off? Sending it off. Like, do I, like, Don't just, take it. No, not don't. No way. No way. Send, but like, come out to the earth? Yes. Like, do I put it in the in the earth or do I put it in the ocean? But I don't think I would want to do that either. So what? What, what you is, have a whole bunch of sharks eating. You know what I mean? Like, I don't right. like that. That's my <laughs> so, like, I don't want to so, but, but still, food. something's going to consume it anyway. Yeah. You get it? Either you bury it, you put it in the ground, it's going to get consumed. Right. Herbs going to consume it. Right. Microorganisms and, you know, things are going to consume it. So whatever makes you feel more graceful. Now, mm -hmm. as far as eating it, I don't suggest that you eat it. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because you have to understand that placenta, that is a body part, mm -hmm. okay? It's yeah. human meat. You see why I've never, I haven't done it right. yet, so I'm like, But I see, people not understand, it's human meat. It's human meat, you're eating something. No, no, no. so, so, would you sit, would you eat, if I chop my arm off right now, right. are you gonna sit there and start chewing on my arm? <laughs> exactly. So why are you chewing on your own body part? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? No, look, 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 look. It would make a little bit more sense. All right, if I chop my arm off and then you ate it, but would you chop your own arm off if you ate it? You get what I'm coming from? It's cannibalism. All right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> listen, listen. Like this wow. is cannibalism. You got to look at it. You not, said I eat it. Yeah, I'm like. You have to look at it from all perspectives. Yeah. There's always more than one perspective. There's, diff there's multiple dimensions. There's a multi-dimension out here. Okay? We're, we're multi-dimensional beings. We exist in multiple dimensions. Therefore, we have multiple dimensions aspects multiple uh as i should say uh, uh perceptions mm -hmm. you can see things from different angles all right and some people can't uh, uh, are stuck on one side and they may be focused on that and they may not see the other side okay but you have to understand the placenta yeah we know that it's uh provided uh much nourishment for your baby and also your body but when, when if you eat something right and it comes out the other end right you eat something and it comes through your urine. Why did that happen? Why did your body push something out? Right. Did it push it out for you to put it back in? Right. It served its purpose. It served its purpose. Now it's time to but it. us with our human minds and our human-like thinking and human suggestions, we always want to do something extra. Yeah. So we're doing extra. We're putting it back in. But the body just pushed it out right. for a reason. Now, I'm pretty sure if your body benefited that much for it to remain in there, it would still be in there. Right. You still understand that your body is a very, very intelligent thing. You understand? It's intelligent. If it wants to keep something that is going to benefit it, it's going to keep that. But if it sees no more benefit right now, it's going to say, okay, it's time to move that on now. Okay? That's what, when it comes to people and uh, 
doing all kinds of stuff, drinking urine and all that extra stuff. Yeah, right. If you don't have to drink urine, don't drink it. Right. You heard about that kind of stuff? I no, see. no disrespect to I those. Heard it's liquid gold, though. But here, here's the thing: no disrespect. <laughs> Listen, no disrespect to those who do it. Everybody have their own experience. But I'm not about to tell you drink your urine. I'm not about to tell you that because I know it's full of uric acid. It's urine, uric acid. You know that the main cause of disease is uric acid from meat. High in uric acid. Mm -hmm. Deteriorates the body. Okay? You have natural uric acid, but in excess. So if your body get rid of excess uric acid, you take that uric acid, you put it back in you. Why are you doing that? We have to be more balanced, you know? We have to be more balanced. It's about balancement. But the placenta, they uh, they tell you this because, yes, it can have some benefits for those who are solely meat eaters. Not everybody on the planet can be a vegan or a vegetarian, if you want to put it on service. Not everybody can be an herbivore. Not everybody can do that. Some people need meat in order to live. We're not those type of beings. You get what I'm saying? That's why nature has certain types of animals. You have carnivores, and you also have herbivores. Then you have omnivores. Originally, we started out as herbivores, as people, okay? Then you have certain other beings who are omnivores, eat just about everything, DNA, DNA. It's about knowing your DNA. And you know that's like, you're sitting up there, and sometimes when it comes to learning what to and what not to do, you have to make sure that you follow your heart too. Because the, your heart, that's the real liquid gold. That's the true liquid gold. That green frequency, that's gold. You have to mix that together. You got the, you got the blue, okay? You got the throat chakra, the blue frequency, right? Mm -hmm. You got this, the solar plexus, it's yellow. You mix that together, you have green, okay? You got the heart chakra, which is green. Yellow is gold. It's golden frequency, all right? You have to follow your heart because it's going to lead you to riches, wealth, health, okay? If you did not follow your heart, and did, you would have ate it already. Right, literally. But you've been following. All these months later. But I'm like, still, I hear about you it. You follow your heart. I know I want to keep it and do something with it, but you, you see it still. Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, you follow your heart. You follow your heart. And what it led you to, not eating. A lot of people I we got right. What I'm supposed to do, like night before? Right. Eat like a little steak. What do I do? Like, what do we do? Eat it like a steak. Like, come on. Like, come on. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't need to do that. Right. Now I could understand if you was like in the middle of a desert and there was nothing else for you yeah. to truly eat. You know what I'm saying? You don't gave birth, and that's what you had. Right. Then for survival purposes, yeah. You get it? Mm -hmm. If that's what you had to eat, that's what was gonna keep you alive. Eat it. You get what I'm coming from? Yeah. It was the reason why you came here. That's all it is. Right. So, and we had another question. Uh, what was that question? Uh, I asked, how do you contact like spirit guides or ancestors? Because I know they send angel numbers as messages, but I want to know like. Okay. What's the real message behind it? Um, um, first, you must also understand that in order to uh, properly contact your Muslapu ancestors, just Muslapu. Before they tell you what's ancestors, we say it, call them Muslapu, okay? And uh, you have to understand this. You already have ancestors. Like, you have, you know, if you have family members, like your grandma, your great grandmas, and all that, your mom, those are ancestors. Great, great, great grandmas, ancestors, grandparents, ancestors, great, great uncles. Okay. You have to get in contact with your own ancestors first. Okay, your positive ancestors. Some ancestors are agreeable and some are also disagreeable. So it's not necessarily just about getting in contact with your ancestors. You gotta know which ones to get in contact with. A lot of people get in contact with their ancestors and a lot of the ancestors are negative ancestors. Those are the ancestors that people are going to the altars, giving them alcohol and tobacco offerings. Mm -hmm. Those are drugs. If it didn't do nothing good for us here in the body, then why would it do something good for them in the spirit? You get what I'm saying? So a lot of us are calling upon ancestors that are wicked, wreaking havoc in our life, causing friction, 
You sit up there, you wonder why your refrigerator ain't working. You don't invite a whole negative electrical current. Now you gotta spend more money on a refrigerator. It gets that deep. Negative spirits can break things in your home, mess your lights up. Also, this is why a lot of y'all cars break down is because y'all smoking in your car. Smoke carries negative frequencies. So things happen in your car. Negative energies jump in your car. You got negative company. You ride down the street. Next thing you know, you always getting constantly pulled over because you give off a negative essence because you're putting smoke in your car. You get what I'm saying? It goes deep. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a science. We know that negative spirits carry a negative charge. So therefore, if you are surrounding yourself around a negative charge, you are surrounding yourself around a negative frequency. Okay? We have to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do and protect ourselves at all times. And like... You gotta understand also that the amount of the blood, the placenta is full of blood. Remember I told you blood consists of iron, okay? The kind of iron that runs. You got plant irons, you got, you know, uh, elemental irons, but this iron and this meat, it rusts into what you call iron oxide. That's a chemical uh, composition for the chemical formula. Iron oxide is a chemical result of rust. So you can be saying up there, you wanna take in all these nutrients, but guess what? You're also gonna be eating some rust too to mess your body up. So I don't suggest that you eat up placenta. If you want to, do what you gotta do. Give thanks, give thanks to the earth. Return the elements to the earth. You know, do what you gotta do, okay? You know, you can do whatever, I mean, whatever you wanna do with it. I just didn't wanna like just throw it in the garbage, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, just, you can do what you, do what you gotta do with it. You know, do whatever's sacred, like look into, um, the uh, sacred feminine ask her, yeah, what can I, how can I dispose of this? You know, ask the sacred feminine, you know, because I can only tell you that for, I can't right. really tell you, you know, no, you, said enough. you get what I'm saying? I can't be like, okay, you should bury it. If that's what you feel like you needed to do, I'm saying, that's on you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all about experience. I don't have a placenta to bury. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a placenta. So whatever you feel you need to do, do what fulfills your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, seek sacred feminine help. You know, it's things that women can do for each other that men can never do. I can never tell you how I even feel to have a baby. So this is why we have to push this knowledge upon our women more because women are the greatest herbalists. They may not know it. They keep looking up to everybody else instead of looking up to themselves. You can, you get what I'm saying? You could, you could be going through all these labor pains. I could say, okay, I know that this is good for labor pains, but I'm, I know this based upon the experience of a woman. Mm -hmm. But a woman can really tell you, and, and you can feel, she can really heart feel you mm -hmm. because you receiving that frequency from her directly. She been through it. And when you speak to people who have been through things by experience, you know that's the way that they can help them. You know, they got through it. So you got to seek that divine feminine help. Y'all got to get y'all feminine circles back on. Y'all have to. Y'all got to be able to do that. Y'all got to stop letting men come in between y'all direct path of righteousness and prosperity. Y'all got to get rid of the jealousy amongst each other. It's always a competition when it comes to women. Okay? Women created everything. Women even created jealousy. <clears throat> okay? So y'all created everything. So you have to understand to watch out for some of your creations. Okay? Balance yourselves out to the very best of your ability and get back into your circles again, okay? And then y'all can ask each other those questions. Hey, I don't know, maybe they probably say eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, but me, I'm just gonna tell you don't do that. I'm just looking at a, you shouldn't do that. I'm looking at it from an herbalist aspect. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can't look at it from a goddess aspect. Yeah, stay. Because I'm not a goddess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, right. So, you know, I'm grateful that you asked that question. So you're saying tapping in with the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it comes to the ancestors, you have positive, you have negative ancestors, and you also have ones who are also positive and are along with negative. Okay? You have ancestors that are neutral, you have ancestors that are positive, you have ancestors that are negative. Make sure you have to understand the power of your grandfather, your, your, your grandparents, their grandmother. They're very, very powerful beings if they're positive, if they carry a positive spirit. They can, the spirit element can help you heal and help you be stronger because they carry an essence of Ashuk, divine love. Love can heal you. Love can change the world. 
if love of unity with each other can change the world, love can also change your health. If it can change the whole world, change the environment of the whole planet just because we are utilizing love, divine love. Imagine what it's doing to your frequency and doing to the cells of your body. Love can raise the frequency. Love of the plant can raise your frequency. If you don't respect these plants, and you sit up there, you take these herbs, but you really don't respect them, they ain't gonna respect you. These herbs that are supposed to help us heal are positive for us when we use them with respect and love. Remember I told you negative and positive energy don't mean. So if you being negative towards the herb, you ain't respecting you, just taking it, you know, oh, you just taking advantage. And see, this is what happens with a lot of uh, uh, celebrity um, uh, people. A lot of celebrities, they get the herbs, but they think that, oh, they're always going to be available because, hey, I can get anything I want. Hey, that's fine, but you might die in the process because you got that mindset that you can always get it and that's going to work for you. Entitled. Right. You feel like you just got it like that. That don't mean you have it like that. That means that that's, that, that, that herb don't care for your human mind. You, you get what I'm saying? Your human perspectives. It cares about energy. So if you're moving with this cocky attitude that you can always get it, that it, oh, it's not, hey, it is what it is, I just wait. It's going to feel like that inside you. Oh, this negative energy, negative and positive don't mix. I told y'all that. Life is like a battery. I keep saying it. You got a positive end, a negative end. But they coexist. They, 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 they coexist, but they don't mix. They just, you get what I'm saying? They don't mix together. They don't mix. So if you got negative energy in you, but you're taking something so positive, it's not going to be as effective. It's not going to soak into you like it's supposed to. But if you approach things with a positive manner and approach these herbs with positivity, respect, and love, and I should for divine love, it's going to do the same thing to you because it already is built from divine love. Right. It's already going to absorb into you. It's going to grow right through you. Y'all all existing together. You understand? So, one moment. Right back, right back, yeah. Right back, right back. Okay. Let's straighten up this camera. It's all right. Say right back, Amara. It's my daughter. So, it's about being positive. Now, your ans you got to understand that plants are also your ancestors. Those are ancestors, too. An ancestor, you want the benefit from your ancestors, you want that guidance, right? Mm -hmm. Ancestors, these, these are ancient things. A lot of these plants are, uh, some of these plants are older than us. That's an ancestor, it's alive, right? Oh, what, you just looking for an ancestor that got an arm, leg, and all that? They got their own kind of arms, they got branches. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? They got their own legs, they got roots and stems. Why, why box ourselves in from not overstanding that plants are your ancestors too? I mean, they help you more than people most of the time. I'm just, give thanks to them, been with them. You get what I'm saying? But then also, we are Musbatu, Wusabat, Sabaians, Sabians, Yamasu, Yamasi, we are the Nuwakians, those who live by the facts of sound right reason. You see that symbol? You should show, show the uh, camera that. Double, that double resurrection. Yeah, go show them. Let me get them a close look at that. That right there, that's the eye tweet. You want to tell them about that? Um, just I, tell them what you feel. You know, I it's just, not a, whatever just, you feel. I mean, you gotta, I, it's no right or wrong. I mean, I just know it's double resurrection. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of knowledge on it, but I just. It's a double resurrection of life. We're here to give you, to renew everything. All right? You think you have the ankh. You know the ankh? Mm -hmm. See, look, let me tell you. See, look. Where's that at on me? I have an ankh tree on me. I think it's over here. No, uh, I know one right here too. Uh, yep, yep. See, I got an ankh tree here. Do you see? Mm -hmm. See? The ankh trees. A lot of people are walking with the ankh. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's, that's a simple of eternal life. This is the renewal of eternal life. This is to bring you back. Bring you back to bring you forward with the full information and affirmation. This is the eternal life, full circle. Bring you that real, real love again, that I shook, that divine love. This represents divine love. 
Divine love is life as we know it, as we should know it. Okay? Now, and it's a whole lot of other stuff, but that's my experience with the op, the onto. That's my experience. That's how I can explain it. I know it's the double resurrection of new life to bring y'all. So that's why we're here with new life. We have new information and affirmation. New out outlooks on how to, you know, heal and what to do, what not to do. It's like, yo, we never heard, we ain't never learned about this in school. Right. How you know how are we so intelligent? It's because we have renewal of our DNA. We are our ancestors in the flesh. And we are back again. And y'all are also your ancestors. You are your ancestors. You are already tapped in with your ancestors being yourself. Your ancestors live through you. Your Muslafu lives through you. So you must be positive. You get what I'm saying? Because that positive ans that positive energy that you're radiating, being positive, attract positive beings. This ancestors you don't even know. You don't really, you're looking for certain ancestors and stuff like that. Yeah, but what about the ones you don't know? Did you give thanks to them? That's up to you. Yo, we always giving thanks to who we know. What about the person or the beings behind scenes? Give thanks to them. Just because you don't know them don't mean that your love don't know them. Give love to everything that is helping you and assisting you. All things. Always give your appreciation and your gratitude. That's how you do it. Now, we are, uh, like I said, Musa Bat, Ms. Fatia. We have Babi al it's an ancient being. All right, and he manifests in the flesh of uh, what many know as Malachi York. Okay, he's in the flesh of Malachi York, and he helps God and he comes to us with messages. It's a being. It's an ancient. It's an ancient being. Ancient being. Okay, ancient being. This is one of the ancestors. Okay, one of them. And you have a set, also known as Isis. Okay, you got Hathor. All right, all those beings came before all these new religions. All right, you have to pay homage. You don't have to, but pay homage to them. Give them thanks. You have Tut Anka Moon. You have King Tut. It's your ancestor. So Hathor is those the actual outdoor and turned it into the Hathor. Is that? You heard him? Remember mm -hmm. we was talking about Thor earlier. Mm -hmm. Remember? We were talking about that. Yeah. Were you in here? No, I was see, okay. see how he's tapping in on it? Yeah. You see that, right? Okay. You see how he just broke down that spell? The okay. spell where he said, so Hathor, so they took Hathor and turned it into their Thor. You get it? Yeah. So, White Thor. Yep, so you can tap in to, uh, <laughs> you can tap into uh, your ancestry through your ancient Egyptian, Tamarian, Kemetic, okay? Sabian beings. Those beings that we're naming, that's who you get in touch with. Musa Bat, Miss Batia. All right? So you found it. Once you find that. Rahul Bat, how you doing? I shook, I shook. You'll come on that. Appreciate you, man, for coming. All right, well, um, we might want to slide over just a little bit or something. And you can sit. Uh, just have a little talk right, talk right now. So uh, that's your ancestors. Then you also spoke about you. You also spoke about. Don't nobody um call my phone or anything like that. If anybody's trying to text y'all to contact me, just tell them I'm busy. Okay, I didn't put the um do not disturb up there before I started recording. Also, you said angel numbers. Angel number. What's the angel number? I feel like it's a message. Leading me, like if I'm on the right path and going in a certain direction, it's either telling me to keep going this way or yeah, that Okay. What's the angel number to you? Um, for me, I've always, when I see them now, I stop and try to like connect with spirit and see like, are, am I trying to get a message? Like, are they sending right. me a message? Mm -hmm. So. What's the angel spirit to you? Got the same thing. Yeah, it kind of makes me feel like I'm like in tune or in sync with. Everything, you right? Know what yeah, I, mean? mm -hmm. I feel calm whatever I see here, just yeah. at random, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Anybody else? Um, kind of touch bases on like what he said. It, it kind of puts me in a state where 
you know, doing something wrong or I'm doing something right. And right. So I do you all the time. And I always look it up after I see it, like the mm-hmm. whatever that I'm saying. And, and, and it always mm-hmm. like adds up. It, it, it's, it's in sync. Synchronicity. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, right. right. What you're you know. supposed to be doing. Yeah. Right. So check mm-hmm. this is my question. If, how do you know that you're doing something? I'm, I'm asking y'all. I just want to see y'all perspective because y'all teaching the people right now. Mm-hmm. So how do you know? This is my question, y'all, and anybody can answer it. How do you know if you're doing something wrong and you see an angel number? Like, why Why would you know? If you see an angel number, but what do you mean? Like, you feel it in the bottom of your stomach. Like, right. like intuition. Yeah, yeah. You feel it in your gut. Right. So you. basically, it's a signal. Like, you see these numbers, y'all seeing a mm-hmm. signal. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Right. It raises these questions mm-hmm. and give you these feelings. That's exactly what that is. Okay? So also, uh, their uh, uh, synchronicity don't just come from just numbers. It comes from seeing certain shapes, certain patterns. You get what I'm saying? You can see it like you can see uh, 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 three cars rolling uh, uh, together. You can see it on tags. You can start seeing the same patterns Mm -hmm. and letters and numbers on tags, the same message on tags. Yeah, so basically what's going on is you have messages out here. You're going to always, your your mind is programmed. Well, you're programming your being, okay? Your mind is built to break down uh, codes. And basically what I'm saying is, what you can do is you can see a message, all right? It can catch your attention. And you always pay attention to that, those things that stick out. Like for example, like uh, a sink could clog up in your house. That, does that just mean that it's food just clogging up the house? Or does it mean that there's stopping, something stopping you, stopping the flow of your life, your energy? moving forward like what's what's causing friction things that cause friction can be messages like a clogged up sink messed up toilet you messed up car like well, why is this all man why things are just messed up around me it's because there's something that you can be doing that's messed up within okay you say uh you can also pay attention to patterns through your friends and the friends you attract and you look around you and you're around a whole bunch of hoes you most likely are. Okay, and then we say, and then, then we get those people. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's real. We, we then we get those people that say things like, uh, we get people that say things like, uh, I'm not a hoe. I don't need sleeping with that person. Just because you're not physically sleeping with a person doesn't mean anything. All the time, you can be thinking it. You can always be interested in the stories they tell. You get what I'm saying? You can be watching porn. That's the whole activity too. You watching all kinds of people. That you don't even know. When you orgasm into people, you don't even know. That's that's whole activity. Birds of a feather flock. Right. You want you want to sit there, you want to show off your body. That's whole activity. You sit up there doing all these things. Hey, like attracts like. So if you're a like, if you're like them in any way, form, or fashion, you can be attracted to them. Person could have a thousand bodies on. This person could be a whole version, but she watched porn all day. Her friend might be a hoe. Cause she a hoe too. And the same thing for him. I gotta say that because you're like, oh, why are we always talking about women? I'm gonna use an example. I'm a guy. Naturally, I'm gonna talk about something else. Yeah. It's not an attack on women. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I love women. Sheesh. But uh, trust me, if I would have ended the video like just saying like that, they would like, yo, you bashing women. <laughs> Give me a break. Can I just teach for a moment from experience? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, sheesh. And yes, men can be hoes too. For real, men can be hoes too. I gotta say that. You know what I'm saying? Much love to my brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, honestly, y'all, we're here to do our very best. Pay attention to every single pattern in life. If it gives you a bad feeling, then pay attention to that gut instinct. That's that soul instinct.